This is an exercise on creating transfer functions from differential uh, species, energy, or uh, mass balances. Uh, for each of these, we're going to assume that Q, our volumetric flow rate, and V volume are constant. And we'll transform <clears throat> each equation to the Laplace domain. And we'll find a transfer function between uh, specified variables. And what we want to do is put this into a time constant and gain form so that we can find how these parameters right here relate to uh, things like kp, our gain, and tau p, our time constant, um, for each of these systems. Okay, so let's start off with this one right here. This uh, species balance, we want to try to find the relationship between the concentration coming into the reactor, okay, or the uh, just a mixture here, and the concentration leaving. Okay, so there's our concentration in, concentration leaving. We assume it's well mixed, and um, so this comes from a species balance where we start with DNA DT equals NA in uh, minus n a out okay and then uh, we have n a equals um, equals c a times v and in the case of n a dot the volumetric flow rate we have c a times q okay our volumetric uh, flow rate um, for the molar, in terms of the molar flow rate right there. Okay, so plugging these in here and assuming that um, that the uh, volume and uh, volumetric flow rate are constant gives us an equation that uh, looks like this. Okay, so we have, let me not put that divided by there, okay. And then we're gonna have Q, uh, C, A, N, minus Q, C, A. And then what we do is we uh, put this into deviation variable form. And one of the ways to do that is just to linearize the equation, our standard uh, linearization formula, which is take uh, this function of C, A, N, and uh, C, A. Okay, and I'm gonna divide through here by V. And what we do is we approximate that with a, a linearization. And uh, the way we do that is uh, put in the steady state values here, plus take this function with respect to CA uh, in, and then plug in our steady state values and do CA in minus CA in bar, which is our uh, steady state value, plus function with respect to CA, plug in our steady state values, and then do CA minus CA bar. Okay, our steady state values right here. Okay, and if it's steady state, then the derivative is zero, so that one is zero right there. So we just put this into deviation variable form um, in something like this. Okay, so this right here is CA in prime, and this right here is CA prime. Those are called deviation variables. And so we put this into uh, deviation variable form. Now this one on, on uh, this side right here, if we just plug in uh, CA prime equals CA minus CA bar. We plug in, uh, you know, CA prime plus CA bar. If we plug that in right here, then we come up with a differential, uh, differentiate, um, okay, these two plus DCA pr uh, bar DT. This is constant, so that's zero. So this relationship right here holds. So the deviation variable um, is uh, 
Okay, the derivative of the deviation variable is equal to the derivative of a, the original. Okay, so we can just make that substitution there as well. Basically, the effect of that is just that now we can just put the prime right there. Okay, so let's come back to our equation now. Okay, after I a little bit of, of that. So you'll see that that's this equation right here. Okay, so that's how we derived it. For the other ones, I'm not gonna do the same process, but you could do that. You could re-derive it, um, you know, linearize it. Uh, what we wanna do is uh, transform each into the Laplace domain. And so to do that, we're gonna come back to the process control website. Um, look at the Laplace transforms and there you'll see a table and this first one we're going to use this derivative uh, right here okay so that's going to be if I come back here that's just going to be s times c of s minus uh, c zero that's our initial condition for our um, deviation variable. Now that one is equal to zero because we subtracted the steady state conditions. And then I have Q divided by V CI of S and, uh, and then minus Q over V times uh, C of S. So I just do capital letters for the, you know, the Laplace variables there. Now some have asked, okay, wait a minute, what did you, how did you just translate that into CI of S? Okay, so if you just come back to the Laplace tables, that's just the definition of a Laplace transform. You have F of T in the time domain, and then you have F of S in the Laplace domain. So if you just wanna transfer a function, we don't know what the inlet concentration profile is going to be. Uh, it might be a step test. Uh, it might be a step response. It might be a, you know, input pulse or something like that. Um, but, you know, we don't, we want to leave, uh, leave that till later. Okay. So we can determine that at a later time. We're just going to leave this as a, uh, as a variable. So now what I want to do is uh, just put all of my C of S terms on this side. So I have S plus Q over V times C of S equals Q over V times C I of S. Okay, and now I want to do, uh, you know, divide this one over here and divide, put this over on this side. So I have C of S over C I of S equals uh, Q over V, um, S plus Q over V. And I'll multiply both sides by V over Q. Okay, the numerator and the denominator, and that gives me one uh, V over Q times S plus one. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this into a standard uh, gain and time constant form, tau P S plus one. So this is my gain right here, and that is equal to one. And my time constant is equal to V over Q. Okay, so the volume divided by the volumetric flow rate. So for mixers where there's no, um, you know, there's no reaction taking place, we'll see that um, the, the gain is going to be equal to 1. And that makes sense if I had an input change of CI of T, you know, let's say I uh, the delta is equal to 1, then my concentration coming out would eventually go to 1 as well because KP is delta output divided by delta input. And then the time constant at which that happens is gonna be related to the volume divided by the volumetric flow rate. Okay, now let me go ahead and just erase this and let's do our second one now. Okay, I'm gonna create just a little bit of room here for this second one. Um, now we have some reaction taking place inside our vessel where we have C in and C out, but we may have a, um, 
a second order uh, reaction right there that uh, is going to be in our uh, mole balance as well. And when you linearize it, you're going to get um, you know this additional term right there. And so I'm just going to relabel this. I'm just going to do beta for that. Um, you can do that because that's just going to be a number. It's going to be a constant right there after the linearization step. Okay, and I'm going to name this one alpha right there. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, C uh, S times C of S. Okay, and then I have my uh, initial condition. Okay, C prime zero is going to be equal to zero. And that is going to be equal to alpha times ci of s minus beta times c of s. Okay, now I'm, what I'm going to do is then put, again, put the c's on this side, s plus beta times c of s. Okay, let me try that again, c of s. All right, and then uh, e equals alpha times ci of s. Okay, just rearranging this gives me the transfer function, alpha over s plus beta. Let me put this into a standard form. Uh, so I'm gonna divide both numerator and denominator by beta. Okay, so I have one over beta times s plus one. So this is going to be my gain and that will be my time constant. Okay, so at the point I linearized it at, uh, that's gonna be my gain and time constant for my system. Okay, let's go down to this energy balance right here. Uh, now we have three variables. We have temperature coming out, we have temperature in, and then we also have a heater. Okay, so this is just a little bit different. We have a uh, heat input, a temperature in, okay, and also a temperature coming out. Uh, and this is from the energy balance. Okay, so no reactions taking place. This is just pure energy balance. Uh, so in order to get these transfer functions, what I need to do is first of all, just assume that one of the inputs, I'll just say assume that Q of S equals zero and then uh, derive uh, transfer function number one. Okay, so we'll do that one first. Um, so let's just assume this is zero right here, and I'll just do S times T of S equals Q over V times T in of S minus T of S. Okay, I'll rearrange this. Um, and so I have S plus Q over V times T of S equals Q over V times T I of S. Okay, now I have my transfer function, Q over V, S plus Q over V. In standard form, this is going to be V over Q, S plus 1. Okay, again, this is my gain, KP, and my time constant, tau P. Okay, so I have my uh, my first transfer function here. Let me fill this one in. This is my uh, first transfer function right here in standard form. Okay, so we've we've done this one right there. So now what I'm going to do is assume that um, you know t inlet of s equals zero, and we'll derive transfer function number two. Okay, so a very similar thing, except um, this is going to be zero. And uh, so let's see, let's go S times T of S equals Q over V. I'll uh, put a minus there, T of S plus Q of S over rho V C sub P. Okay, and I'm going to call this... Uh, negative alpha, and then I'll call one over rho V C sub P. I'll call that uh, beta. Okay, so now I have S times T of S equals negative alpha T of S plus beta Q of S. Okay, so I just renamed those to make it convenient so I don't have to copy a lot of 
characters around, I can substitute those back in uh, later. So S plus alpha times T of S equals beta times Q of S. And uh, now I have my final transfer function. Okay, beta S plus alpha. I'm going to put that into standard form. Okay, 1 over alpha S plus 1. There's my KP and my tau P. Okay, so now if I want to combine these two, if I want to combine these two transfer functions, what I would do is um, we'd put them in series, so or actually in parallel. So I have Ti of S, and I would have 1 over V over Q S plus 1. Uh, let me write that again. Okay, here's my transfer function, V over Q S plus 1. And that would add together with a second transfer function, which is a result of my heat input. And both of those would affect the temperature coming out. Okay, so here I have beta over alpha, one over alpha, S plus one. Those are my two transfer functions. And if I want to add them together, I'm gonna to call this one G1 of S and this one G2 of S. Okay, so I have uh, T of S equals G1 of S. That's my first transfer function times my temperature inlet plus my second transfer function times my Q. Okay, so here is my expression with both inputs. But to get the specific transfer function just between temperature and the inlet, I would just assume that uh, there's no change in the heater rate. So this concludes the, um, you know, if you come here to the transfer functions link, uh, this concludes this exercise. There's a little bit more material there at the top. I'll also post this video down at the uh, bottom of this page. But it talks a little bit more about transfer functions, how to combine them, and finally uh, this exercise right here.